Each year, scientists, researchers, and everyday people make incredible discoveries, helping us to better understand the world around us. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at interesting discoveries. Tech firm will pay you £150,000 to use your face on its robots. One thing that robots are not often described as is a friendly face. But a New York-based tech company is looking to change that by adding your friendly face to its robots. Currently, humanoid robots are often given computer-generated faces that notably lack the genuine emotions and expressions seen in real-life human faces. However, the world-renowned company called Promobot is launching an upcoming project that is offering a financial incentive for you to put your face onto one of their new robots, which will be launched throughout North America and the Middle East in public spaces such as hotels, shopping centers, and airports. If you would like to encounter your electronic clone in one of these spaces, you could potentially earn a large amount of financial compensation, as Promobot is offering £150,000 for the privilege of using your face on one of their robots. It appears as though race and gender are of no importance to the future robots. As to qualify, the company has stated that all you need is to be at least 25 years old with a kind and friendly appearance. However, the process of giving your digital likeness to a robot is slightly more involved than one might think. After signing a license agreement that allows the company unlimited use of their appearance, Promobot will take scans of the individual's face and body in order to generate a 3D model to apply to the robot's external features. You will also have to dedicate at least 100 hours of material, as the robot, with your likeness, will also have your voice when it communicates with customers in its eventual home. Promobot is no stranger to realistic robots, as their creations are already known for their eerie similarities to real-life humans and have been implemented in various roles across 43 countries. It hopes that having access to a realistic 3D model for its robots will help to further expand the reach of robot workers acting as administrators, promoters, guides, and friendly concierges across the world. This all sounds highly futuristic, but the company aims to have its first entirely humanoid robots out in the public by 2023 at the latest, so an era of friendly, helpful robots who are exact replicas of normal individuals elsewhere in the world will likely be upon us sooner than one would think. Although Promobot would have access to the likeness and voice of the brave volunteer essentially forever, it might be worth it to be able to walk through a shopping mall or airport and encounter a friendly robot clone of yourself. Sonar equipment revealed that there was a submerged plane at the bottom of Lake Norman in North Carolina. On a regular day in North Carolina upon the shores of Lake Norman in 2013, a group of firefighters set out for what they thought would be a routine training exercise. However, nearly 100 feet down, they discovered a small sunken plane that was submerged in the deepest part of the lake. They were able to use a technology called side sonar imaging, which allowed them to create an image of large areas across the lake floor. Used as part of a procedure to identify safe diving areas, the discovery of the plane changed the entire scope of the training exercise. The Charlotte Fire Department's dive team quickly jumped into action, swimming down into the man-made lake to learn more about the fallen aircraft. What they found was the single-engine aircraft standing on its nose about 90 feet below. Even though the doors were tightly shut, they found no evidence of any body remains or victims. Yet, questions still lingered. Who was the owner of the plane? When did it crash? And how did it happen? To search for answers, the Federal Aviation Administration took over, poring over aircraft ownership records. While a few clues emerged, the case of the sunken plane remained a mystery. Officials believed that the plane crashed around 30 years ago, but a preliminary search through the archives found no reports of any plane crashes in Lake Norman. One theory that emerged was that it might have been an amphibious plane that must have floated away from a dock and sank, unnoticed for so many years, but no leads came from it. However, after news broke out, phone calls came in from prospective owners. A woman named Barbara Anderson believed that the plane was hers. 
She recalled the moment more than 30 years ago when flight instructors were using it for training. When they landed upon the water, they forgot to put the gear up to lock the plane on the surface, and it sank. After thousands of dollars to find the plane again, it was never found. Another lead came in too, this time from a man named Carol Leinberger, who claimed that the plane's owner was his dad, a licensed pilot named John Gibson. He remembered flying around in the plane with his dad as a kid until two weeks later when his dad told him that it sank. Others also believed that the plane belonged to John Gibson, the man credited with starting the Lake Norman Air Park who has since passed away. Since the discovery of the plane in 2013, little news has emerged about the final identification of the plane. Last updated on July the 9th, 2020, the FAA finally confirmed that the plane had been at the bottom of Lake Norman since the summer of 1974. Among the records, it was found that the aircraft was a Lake LA-4 amphibian whose owner, although not named, was a North Carolina resident that was deceased. As of now, the plane still has not been lifted from the waters. As time goes on, the case of the mysterious sunken plane remains shrouded in mystery. NASA approves Asteroid Hunting Space Telescope to continue development Recently, NASA officially backed the NEO Surveyor, or the Near-Earth Object Surveyor, and its further development following a mission review's thriving results, which proved it useful for future intents and purposes for protecting our planet from intergalactic dangers. The review's authorization means that the NEO Surveyor is now eligible to move on to the key decision point B state of its development, colloquially known as the preliminary design. This space telescope obtains infrared lenses which are specially made to improve NASA's defense systems in the case of potential life-ending disasters from outer space. The NEO surveyor is meant to discover any potential threats and run them through an inbuilt list of characterizations that will identify them accordingly into various categories, including comets and asteroids, among other dangers. Mike Kelly is one of the experts on the NEO Surveyor team and a program scientist at the headquarters of NASA, and he states, NEO Surveyor will have the capability to rapidly accelerate the rate at which NASA is able to discover asteroids and comets that could pose a hazard to the Earth, and it is being designed to discover 90% of asteroids 140 meters in size or larger within a decade of being launched. Currently, NASA has confirmed that an estimated 40% of nearby objects of the desired size have been found. The goal for the future is for the NEO surveyor to be able to uncover up to 90% of all objects close to Earth more substantial than 1,000 meters or 3,280 feet in size. Kelly Fast, one of NASA's program managers, commented about the usefulness that the NEO surveyor could have for future endeavors. Each night, astronomers across the globe diligently use ground-based optical telescopes to discover new NEOs, characterize their shape and size, and confirm they do not pose a threat to us. Those telescopes are only able to look for NEOs in the night sky. NEO Surveyor would allow observations to continue day and night, specifically targeting regions where NEOs that could pose a hazard might be found and accelerate the progress toward the congressional goal. Fast's comment holds ground when the criticality of discovering and analyzing NEOs is taken into consideration. Time wasted on the characterization of comets or asteroids can cost us greatly in the future and take away precious moments which could be spent trying to protect ourselves from imminent catastrophes. An NEO surveyor investigator, Amy Mainzer, agrees with Fast's comment and confirms that the ability to search for NEOs in the daylight especially in the direction of the Sun, could be of huge help for astronomers. Mainzer additionally complemented the NEO surveyor's ability to combine infrared light with ground-based observatories and their usage of radar which could assist the telescope in precise detection of any NEO's position in space. The official launch of the NEO telescope is currently set to occur five years from now in 2026. Mysteries great and small surround us. We can never truly be too sure of anything because science is an ever-changing form of art and an endless source of knowledge. Our past can be altered with one unearthed artifact to make us question all truths. 
Our future is abundant with fears and excitements when it comes to potential technological developments. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.